welcome back again we will continue to study on the family so we looked into um, you know how to encourage a spouse to grow in what god have called uh, encourage a spouse to pursue what god god's purpose in our life at the same time we look in the children God has called the children to pursue. Each and every child has been uniquely gifted and God has uh, uh, called them for a unique purpose. Can I request one of us to please turn to Psalms 139.16? Psalms 139.16. Yeah. Psalms 139.16. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the day's passion for me, when as yet there were none of them. Amen. 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 So God has designed each child uniquely for a purpose he has in mind for them. As children, we need, uh, as parents, we need to see the children uh, in the area what they are gifted. And we need to support them to nurture them in that area because God given gifts and talents in the child and the way the area is been uh, growing and expressing himself as a parent. We need to encourage and direct the children in that area so that the child can grow in that gift. It shouldn't become like, you know, uh, yes, I'm a preacher, so I want my son also to be a pastor, a preacher, a ministry leader. Yes, that's a good desire. You can pray about it. You can ask God. But then you should not influence. You should not pressurize the child to do what you want it to do. If the child wants to become a doctor, please support the child for him to become a doctor. If he wants to become an engineer, go ahead. Or if he wants to take up an artist job, if he is creative in that you see him painting wonderful paintings and uh, he's much interested in that, show him the path, how he can grow, how he can explore the skill, the talent that God has put into him. If you see a child, uh, you know, always into the music, he loves playing drums, playing guitar, encourage him. Do not stop or do not take away that, try to stop that talent. What is this talent? Just because you may not be interested in the music and you wanted your son to do something else, do not stop from what God has given the talent to him. We need to nurture, we need to first recognize and then nurture and build that skill in the child. Give that opportunity, um, open up uh, that kind of environment or uh, you, you can put him in a music school or uh, send him to a good place under a good tutor where he can learn and flourish the call that God has given to the child. As a parent, we need to nourish and, and uh, see to it that you know he grows in that talent. But then if he is also interested in preaching and teaching the word and he likes serving in the church, that's wonderful. You can praise God for it and you can nurture the child in that area as well. But remember, God is creative. He does not uh, produce duplicates. But we must not pressurize our children to do something what we want to do uh, with having our expectation in our mind and implementing that on our children may not be right, but allow what God has called the child to do. So we, as a ministry leader, should give the freedom for our wife, for our spouse, and for the children to do what they want to do in their life and support them and encourage them, be there for them. And uh, by doing this, we also set a godly example at home. As in 1 Timothy 3, 5, we read that, uh, for if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Or in Proverbs 17, 6, we read that children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children is their fathers. And Isaiah 38, 19 says the living the living man he shall praise you as i do this day the father shall make known your truth to the children so our life speaks all the time to our children to our spouse because we live in the full world and we set a godly example by showcasing the love of god in to them 
we being there at home for to meet their need as well this is what god has called us as a ministry leader to do to show god's love not only to the church congregation but to our own family as well and do not preach to your spouse very important can i request one of us to please turn to first peter chapter 3 verse 7 please okay one one peter 3 verse 7 likewise husbands live with your wives in an understanding way showing honor to the women as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered amen husband likewise dwell with them with understanding giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel has been hairs together the grace of life that our prayers may not be hindered so if there is any any problem any discussion arises we need to discuss it out on a day to day basis but we should not take that to build a sermon and to preach to a partner at home no one wants to be preached you are a husband you are the wife of your spouse shouldn't become like you know for every deed for everything there's a verse been quoted there's a sermon been preached uh, there's a correction for everything no you know uh, waiting to pinpoint the mistake then there is no love if we you know there's a quote from mother teresa where she says if you keep judging a person then you don't have time to love that person especially and husband and wife we need to be loving each other children become the other way like waiting to find fault on each other or judging each other the sunday you preach like this but at home this is what you're setting up so a uh, family should be something like this there should be joy so it doesn't happen automatically we need to create it we need to create it especially Uh, uh in a ministers of god family we may have uh, gone on a great ministry preaching and teaching and we have seen god big signs wonders and miracles happen in the ministry and the minute you come back everything is changed at home there is anger the vibes at home the atmosphere is not very pleasant this kind of fight anger uh, you know heated arguments at home children are not obedient to the parents or the wife is very displeased with the husband so how do we handle the situation it doesn't mean that none of us would face in a married life all of us will face this but it all depends how we handle our life you know something i have a secret i have a good news to share that we as a man of god women of god have the authority in our hand to change that atmosphere to love to love because this is what the enemy desires to be enemy can put on your mind like hey you are a great preacher and a teacher in your church in your congregation and people applaud you people celebrate you but when you go home it is a big disaster your wife says ho oh, why did you come or you feel oh why did i come home i have to hear all this back from them no make it as a pleasant place make a place very pleasant see god in every area because god has given us the authority to change this is what it is we as a minister as a leader as a servant of god we have the authority to change this atmosphere at home speak god's word speak speak jehovah shalom speak god's peace at home speak god's joy at home humble yourself if your wife is rude that's okay humble yourself show god's love to her god will change you as a person change your spouse into the spouse like what god is expected her to be a person of love pray for your children if they have gone astray or you see certain things not right instead of abusing them shouting at them showcase god's love sit with them understand why they are doing what they are doing spend some time with them 
by you doing that your family will become the family of joy crack jokes it's nothing wrong it's not like you're a man of god how can you crack a joke yes crack some good jokes see to that your family loves spend time take them out for a lunch dinner spend that time with them take them out often you need to take them out at least in a year once or twice in a year depending on your schedule and the financial status something something small that we can do so that they cherish they remember this time of family time and when you are at home try to understand their need talk about the personal need the family issues at home what happened find out why your spouse was angry see to it that you solve her problem that she is happy take her out on a personal dinner there's nothing wrong in having date with your wife with your husband after marriage that's wonderful that's beautiful to give in their time you are filled with love give them that uh, you know the priority saying wow i love you i'll cherish you come let's go out give the children their time the dad time the mom time take them out play with them see what they are interested so that you know they get to spend time with you as the child grow in different stage the interest would be different if you have a grown up child a child may be interested to go to a gym or swimming or play a uh, badminton whatever the child is interested or play a soccer spend time in doing that activity with your child so that when you do things what your child is interested in then he will do the things what you are interested in in that way you are first setting an example to your child hey i am much more interested in what you are doing what you are saying i want to listen to you i want to talk to you i want to hear you through how is your school how is your day when you have this personal one to one discussion and then when you want to share something good to your child your child will pay that 100% attention to you and he will also implement that in his life as proverbs 20 to 6 says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it because god has given us as a parent the responsibility to train our child and nurture them in faith and as you get the opportunity yes you should not preach to your own family but then how you can do it the small ways uh, you know if you get the liberty uh, you know at home my husband gets to put the children to sleep he, he he puts the elder one to sleep and i put my younger one to sleep so when we uh, put them to sleep we get that opportunity one to one we get to hear them what they are interested in how they spend their time playing what are their issues yes it may be silly things if a 6 year old can say that you know i created a rocket a paper rocket for him it is a greater achievement he learned that and he created different designs of rocket and he has stone one whole notebook to make that paper rocket instead of us you know shouting at him hey you destroyed the whole book instead of that we like saw his creativity like wow that's superb that's very nice at the same time next time i showed him the book that he could use to create those uh, paper uh, aeroplanes for him it's a big creative thing and a learning uh, uh, yes i want to correct him in that because the whole house with with mess you know um, when we go out we see the whole house with all papers everywhere it is an additional thing to clean but yes i didn't correct him immediately but then night when we put him to sleep we hear him through appreciated him like wow you did this very nice but is it possible that we could collect back those papers into a bag so that it's easy for us to discard and he agreed immediately and next time we saw him doing that we saw him use the used papers than tearing the uh, pages from a good notebook so the small correction we can tend to implement it in our one on one time here and there as we listen to him you can share the word you can share the truth you can show god's love to the child 
So one thing that we have in place, something nice is, you know, we make sure that every day before we go to bed, you know, my son comes and hugs me. Yeah, because my husband puts him to sleep. So before he could put him to sleep, he makes sure that he come, hugs me, kisses me, and we both pamper each other. And then he goes to sleep. And I get to play with him and, you know, read the bedtime stories and, you know, share the learning time. We get to study together. So it, it, we make it like a game. I say, okay, I need to study this portion and let's see who study first. So we create because children learn when in playful manner. We have to be creative. So according to the age, we can do it. Just to build that love, trust and respect with our children, we need to go to their level to teach them what is expected from them. Yes, it's not easy. It takes time. It takes a lot of patience. But then God has asked us to do that because God has been patient with us. God teaches each one of us in the way we can understand. So he's been a very good parent to each of us, isn't it? God was patient when we went astray. God was patient in correcting us and bringing us back in track. God is impatient in teaching us to understand. So how can we become upset with our children when they don't do what we are expected them to do? So we need to be patient. We need to showcase the love and trust and respect so that we can see the child grow in the same way, love, trust and respect. Spending time with them is more important, especially to the children and to your spouse. As we do it, what's important to them becomes what's important to us. In this way, we also teach them what is important to us becomes important to them as well. Maintain your family altar. Maintain your family altar can uh, can i request one of us to please turn to psalm 78 1 to 7 jafina can you read psalm 78 verse 1 to 7 brother lubeka anyone can read the scripture some what yes please some, some what some some First word. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, brother. Please go ahead. Uh, what Psalm? Psalm 78? Psalm 78, verse 1 to 7. Yes. Okay. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ear, your ear to the words of my mouth. Verse 2. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter that thing of food, verse 3, which we have heard and know, and our fathers have told us, verse, three, verse 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful work that he has done, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our father, that they should make them know unto their children, verse 6, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should, who should arise and declare them to their children, verse 7, which is last verse, that they might set their hope in God. And not forget the work of God. Keep, but keep these commandments. But Amen. keep these commandments. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> yes, it is so very important to maintain the family altar, to set this time to read the scriptures together so that as the scripture says that what we do, you know, it affects our children. Declare them to their children. So what happens here is when we set this time, we should make our family altar very meaningful according to the age of our children in the way they could understand. 
we should not go in a different tangent you know praying big prayers uh, reading and you know but they are too small so we need to keep it interesting to our children how we need to you know pray uh, right now like you know our children are small so what we do is we we teach them few scriptures and then we pray together we sing song yes my, uh, my elder son is good in singing so we ask him to lead us uh, lead worship so we sing along with him so he every day you know he selects two songs he sings and we all sing together then after that he will lead us in scripture reading so there are few scriptures that we have taught him so he goes ahead so he uh, along with him we repeat the scripture and then uh, there's a small time of personal prayer we teach him how to pray so he's been completely involved we involve him in the prayer and then he goes to play and then you know uh, each of us take turn we all take turn to pray and we end that and after that we do our own scripture reading we do our own prayer if it takes about 1 hour or 1 and a half hour or 2 hours for our prayer we can't expect small children to stay that long then the children uh, you know they will lose interest for prayer they'll be waiting like when this prayer will come to an end they will not enjoy that family altar time so when we keep it interesting when we keep it fun when we involve the child to do what they can do what they can understand they will enjoy that time of prayer they will see god they'll pray a young son the prayer is very 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 interesting you know uh, for everything for praying over the medicine or if he's taking any anything you know very short for for prayer night time prayer over the food also thank you jesus praise you jesus love you jesus we keep it so simple so that he learns to say that so his prayer towards the food will be the same thing is a uh, prayer do uh, during the prayer all the time will be the same thing and also when he is sleeping that time prayer is the same thing because we want him to just learn to say the three words thank you jesus praise you jesus love you jesus and this has become so interesting for him he knows for each time he do when he is uh, uh, when he is having food he places his hand over the food like this and he says thank you jesus praise you jesus love you jesus and during the all the time he clo- he folds his hand like this and sleeping time also he says this this is what a small thing yes but according to the child how they can pray god delights in it isn't it we don't expect something big from the child and we also sing the song what he likes to sing he likes uh, um some simple songs i, I i'm not getting it right now uh, god's love is so wonderful he likes to sing that he sings with his loud pitch with his own expression wow that's beautiful i'm sure god delights in that song the version that he sings every word may not be clearly pronounced but yes i'm sure god enjoys that song we laugh we enjoy yes so something similar so according to the age of our children keep it interesting if you have a grown up child uh, read a short stanza and explain that stanza or uh, each one take a, a, a take turn if we are four of us in our family and we have a grown up children you can give them a scripture we all can sing uh, you know a song to worship and then you can take up a portion of scripture each one read and explain what they understand and now remember you may be a great preacher but if your son and daughter is explaining that scripture in a very simple way or maybe in what they understand appreciate it we should not try to correct them oh you could also have shared so much yes that is as per your knowledge the the uh, knowledge that you don't have to implement on them but appreciate them for their few words of their understanding what they have shared and join it say like wow you explained it so well today i learned something from you of what you shared it makes that person feel good and also it gives opportunity for that child to learn more on the scripture it also gives an opportunity for that child the freedom for the child to share next time 
if we tend to correct the child or add more points to it, you're some way putting a stop to the child. Hey, what you are thinking or understanding is much different. And that is not what the scripture says. But remember, the child is growing. When the child attends your age, maybe the child would know much more than what you and I know. So we need to give the freedom for the child and make the family altar interesting and enjoyable. And this is what God delights in. And uh, one thing what we should make sure is uh, have that altar every day consistent. We have it every day after our prayer time. Sorry, after our dinner. After our dinner, we set this time and we all come together for prayer. And after that, we put our children to sleep. So have this. Yes, there are times when we have uh, like uh, any kind of uh, work or we go out on ministry, we come back home very tired, but then we should not miss that. Have a time of worship. There are times where we have just sang some songs or uh, uh, we have just prayed. We have prayed in tongues or we have just prayed together and we have rested. But Having the altar time, having that prayer before rest is very important. So put your family before ministry. As we read in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, one who rules his own house as well, and having his children in submission with all reference is very important. So yes, as we go on ministry, uh, 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 as we serve in different areas, we need to pay attention to our family as well. If you have gone on a, a week's time or a month's time out on a ministry journey, but when you're out, compensate that time with your family. Do not ignore your family. Take them out or take a break. Spend more time with your family, with your spouse, with your children, so that they don't uh, feel that you're not there for them, but then they enjoy your time with them. The family is very important. Guard your family while ministering to people. Very, very important. As, as you are the ministry leader, the church congregation can expect a lot of things from, from your spouse or from your children. Remember, uh, just because uh, you're a pastor does not mean that your wife also should be a pastor, as we discussed previously. So we need to give the liberty for our spouse to grow in the area where she is. Uh, in the area that she's talented in. If there are certain instances, certain conference or special meeting in your church for which your spouse is unable to join because she is at work, that is okay. And your congregation may expect her to be there, but then you need to give liberty to your wife. You don't have to pressurize your wife, say, I'm going to the conference, I'm, um, I'm going for a meeting where as a pastor's wife, you need to be there. So you apply, leave and be here with me. No, we should not do that. Allow her to do what she is doing as God, you know, asked you to do what you are called you to do. And if your congregation asks, even before they could ask, you can you can inform everyone that your wife is a doctor, your wife is a nurse, or she is a beautician, she has work, she has to do what she is called to do. Your children. Congregation may expect your children to be like the angels. As a pastor, pastor children needs to be angel. They have to be well-mannered, good, while their own kids are, you know, playing and doing whatever. Kids are kids. We need to keep in mind. Or we are human and all our kids are the same. Everyone make mistake. That's okay. That's okay. Allow our children to be what they are. If they want to sing, or uh, I have my children, if we ask my son to sing a song, he sings rhymes. It's okay. Or he will talk about a Superman or the Spider-Man. That's okay. Allow the child to be what they are. We are not expecting great stories, great sermon from the children. But in time, they will learn. But at the same time, what we need to do by teaching the children what need to be learned, but then don't, don't pressurize them. Don't pressurize them. Even in the church, if the child want to color, 
allow the child to color. You can't expect your son to be uh, sitting and listening to the long sermon. They are small. They are kids. Or if your child is eating during sermon, that's okay. Okay, allow the child to do what they are tend to do. And as they grow, they will grow looking and learning. Give them the liberty. They, they love. When we correct them too much, then they will hate coming to church, hate being, uh, you know, uh, uh, children of a pastor. They cannot pretend. That's the reason many, uh, many uh, children we see as they grow up, the pastor's children, they go away. They go astray from the church or they don't want to do anything with the church or anything uh, with the calling, anything to do related to church. They go completely astray. The pastor say, oh, how strictly I brought my children, but then now they are not tending to listen to me. We should be very careful. We should allow the child to grow as a child and do not pressure the children with the expectation of the congregation because there would be people, there's no end for the expectation of people. We need to allow the child to be what they are. And at home, you allow the place to be home. Do not uh, invite everyone. Do not uh, uh, everyone home, so that you know every time your wife uh, should be you know um, uh, 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 to be hospitable, or your children to be at uh, um, you know in a good posture at home, so that uh, they can treat people. Yes, once a while when you invite people like a guest, it's good, but then it shouldn't become uh, your uh, your home should not become your church office. You know, I heard uh, one of the pastors share this. He said, as I grew up, as I grew up, uh, uh, <clears throat> he said that, you know, um, it was very difficult in my childhood uh, because I, I, I decided as I grew up, I don't want to become a pastor like my father because everyone he invited home. And always he took my bedroom off from me and made others to rest in my room. And I didn't have the liberty to do what I wanted to do. So this is what, uh, you know, as growing up, the children share about what the parents did. They don't have the liberty to play. They don't have the liberty to do what they want to do because home is a place where the child and uh, the, the family members who are staying try to express what they wanted to be, they wanted to do because that's the home. So we should not do this. Yes, inviting the church members, inviting, uh, you know, uh, 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 anyone at home is good. Other pastors' home is good. But once a while, it shouldn't become 365 days. Okay, we do invite people, but once a while to celebrate with us, to uh, just to have that fellowship with the family, we do invite and special occasions. But that's it. Keep your home secured. Keep that place protected for your family. Do not step out. Do not step in. Well, as we discussed this, um, it talks about uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father, mother, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Talks about the marriage. You, marriage is a circle where husband and wife are there together. You need to try to work out your uh, weaknesses or challenges, whatever comes in your life. You need to discuss and work it out. You cannot step out or you cannot step in into a different person's life. Okay? Everything should be within the boundary of that marriage circle. At any cost, we should not step out. This displeases God. Divorce is not God's idea, but marriage is God's idea. He has united us. So regardless of what reason or needs they be, we should not step out of this boundary of marriage. We should be there to work things out. There's a very beautiful movie, uh, Fireproof. Yes, I remember. Thank God. Fireproof. Have anyone watched this movie? Yes. That's a beautiful movie. So they try to work out. 
there will be ups and downs but then you try to work out and uh, more about marriage you will you have a, a special subject on that itself christian marriage and family where in detail you would be studying on that okay so get help so if there's any uh, any problem that you are not able to solve it is good to seek help you may think hey i'm a minister of god how can i take help from others do not have any kind of pride or any kind of uh, thing uh, stop you from taking help the sooner you take help it is better it is you can save your family life Ephesians chapter 4 16 says from the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share cause growth of body for edifying of itself in love yes as as a ministry leader god would have uh, called us anointed us and gifted us in certain area but when we have our own problem in our family we need to look out for some expertise who are expert in that area take help from them take help as soon as possible so that you can solve the problem if not it would burst one day which would be a shocking news to everyone and you cannot cover at that stage you cannot recover at that stage so early the better look out for some good counselors or good the minister of god that's okay do not have any kind of pride come through while you seek help from others and uh, ministry is not your family business many of us in the ministry where we see the uh, we, where the grow, the ministry is grown and uh, we think like after me is my son is my daughter who will take this ministry further as isaiah 59 21 can i request one of us to please read isaiah chapter 59 verse 21 brother subhashish can you read yes ma'am as for me this is my covenant with them says the lord my spirit who is on you will not depart from you and my words that i have put in your mouth will always be on your lips on the lips of your children and on the lips of their descendants from this time on and forever says the lord amen amen thank you as for me says the lord this is my covenant with them my spirit is upon you and my words which i've put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants nor from the mouth of your descendants descendants that is children's children from this time and for evermore amen it is the plan and the purpose of god that faith the revelation the anointing given to one generation to be passed on to the next generation and it is god's purpose that each generation to build the next generation to build the foundation to the next generation so that they can take it forward and it is wonderful to see the ministry uh, the uh, the families in the ministry grow in that way we have seen many families even now in our time we see so many uh, grown up ministries well established ministries have been taking care like that from their father to their son and uh, to their children and again from to their children's children and it's going well they all flow in that anointing and we see greater anointing also in their children children they also take the ministry to a different level to the next level they expand the ministry worldwide this is amazing praise god for it is it we see they are gifted in that area divine call is upon them there's a purpose and how god has raised and blessed this family it is beautiful but at the other side we also see the wrong expression of this we see the church is grown established and all the major position is been held by their own family members 
who are not flowing in that anointing, who are not flowing in that gift or in that charisma. But then, because though position should not be given to others, they want to hold on to it. And you see the ministry not growing further. The ministry struggles because God may have called them in a different area to flow in, but then they are occupied into that area where God has not called them to be. We see, uh, you know, um, many ministries where, uh, uh, you know, a husband is a pastor of the church, wife takes care of the Sunday school or the children's church, and uh, their children or their sisters occupy the other roles in the church, not allowing or not giving an opportunity for the church congregation or the church members who are flowing in that area, who are gifted in that area. Why? Because they want to occupy the uh, the front position in that the major uh, place. So here the ministry suffers because uh, the position that God has created and uh, they occupy it without the gift or the call of God. And maybe most of the time for some wrong reasons. But when it is occupied that way, we don't see the growth in the ministry and we see uh, the outcome is very disastrous. We saw that in the, uh, in the Bible when we studied the book of Samuel, we saw the son of Eli were not as per the father. And God, they had to face the consequence of it. At the same time, the sons of Samuel. So in as much as we eager to see our children and our grandchildren rise up and follow those steps, uh, you know, in serving God, we must remember that as an individual, they have God's plan and God has given them the gift and talent. We need to recognize that and give them the opportunity to grow in that area and not pressurize them. And at the same time, if you need help, you, uh, you, we can assign those ministry areas, uh, you know, into our church congregation, recognize their talent and skill in the church members and give them that position so that even as an individual, even they can grow and even your ministry can grow and establish and expand much better than what we can think. So as we do this, let each of us serve God with all our heart and mind and soul, not occupy the position, uh, you know, to ourselves, but allow it freely, allow the church members to grow in the gift, in the area that they have been gifted. If you see anyone growing in the word, uh, in the wisdom of God, encourage them, encourage them, uh, 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 you know, uh, Encourage them to be part of a good Bible college, get them equipped, give them the opportunity to serve in the church. It shouldn't be like, hey, what if he preaches better than me? Will I become blue? Nothing like that. Don't have that fear as a ministry leader. We should be in a position like, to see our congregation grow, we should be, uh, you know, we should appreciate for uh, for the uh, um, for the wisdom that God has placed in each one of their life. Okay, we shouldn't feel that, you know, okay, our children are not in the Lord or our children are not in preaching and teaching, but then their skill and their gifting is different. How can I encourage other children? Or, um, you know, it shouldn't be that way. We should encourage God has placed each leaders in our church with certain gift and talent. We need to recognize that and give them the opportunity to grow in the church. And keep it open because this is the body of Christ. Ministry belongs to God and not to us. It's not a business, but it is a place to serve God and service people. We need to be very clear in that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 says, But now God has said the member, each one of them, is a body just as he pleased. So we need to please God in every area, give opportunity to everyone to serve, teach, preach, in the church and recognize and allow each one to grow and appreciate them, make a way for them to grow. So with this, we complete the second chapter in this book on family. And I open up to our class to share 
uh, something that you'd like to share that God has put in your heart? Or what was your learning in this session? Please feel free. Nikki, would you like to share something? Can be anyone in the class, Divya, Brother Avdesh, Brother Subhashish. Um, hi, Pastor Dan. I'll just... Hi, hi. I mean, I, I don't have much to say, but just want to say that uh, it, it's, it was a blessed teaching, a lot of learning uh, i've personally seen um i think you know my testimony so how i came into the ministry so i've personally seen both sides of it where um, some children have gone the extreme of not wanting to have to do anything with church and uh, while in the same family some of them have come back to serving the church so uh, i completely agree and I, I I would just say it's very tricky. Currently, I have like y'all. I have a boy who's about going to turn four, so it's very very tricky to manage both. But this teaching was very helpful, so thank you for that. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Elisha, Brother yes. Isaac, yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. I think the the most important thing to put on should be empathy. Empathy is like putting yourself in the shoes of the other person before you do anything. For instance, if you have a four-year-old, it wouldn't be nice if you, you want this kid to have an intellect like yours. Try to stand in his or her own shoes and ask yourself, how would I be saying this? If if you see that you cannot explain it to his, to him or to her to understand, that means that you failed your work as a, as a pastor or as a dad or as a mom. So we should always try our level best to see to it that uh, we have empathy to the younger ones. Ask yourself, like, if it is your bed and they tell you at age four that today you're not going to sleep in this bed, how would you feel? If you do that, I think it can always be great. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing this. Very important to, you know, uh, get to the children level at their age level and, you know, talk to them in the way they talk, talk to them in the way they can understand and explain it to them. That's nice. Yes, Devya, please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. It was a, a really good session. And I just wanted to share the one thing uh, regarding marriage uh, between a husband and a wife uh, throughout uh, um, my years, uh, like our years of marriage. One thing that uh, we have learned is uh, basically from Ecclesiastes 4.12, uh, which says a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back back to back and conquer three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken so uh, that there can be many things that can uh, you know um uh, incite you know an argument or uh, um trying to point fingers at each other but you know always going back to that verse right uh it's uh it helps uh, and we have seen uh yeah we can testify that yeah it works uh so Praise yeah God. Thank you. Praise God. So as we share, as I share all this, it doesn't mean that I'm perfect in all the area, but then we all try to keep up, as Divya said. Thank you, Divya, for sharing that. Yes, it is a process. Every stage in our life is a process. Uh, learning. We are not a parent before unless and until we have a child. So we get to learn with them. We try things which will work, which may not work, but then we learn. Okay, the same with the ministry also. So it is a process. Uh, just because we teach and preach, it doesn't mean that we are perfect. Yes, we are working. We are working and we work together just that we need to have the heart to learn. 
just that we need to be ready to unlearn certain things and learn certain things and we also need to be humble enough to accept the mistake when we do it may be with our children with our spouse with our uh, church members with our congregation with our leaders you know we need to be humble enough to accept the mistake when we do wrong at the same time we need to be teachable we can learn things from the little ones and also from anyone in our church from our spouse from our congregation leaders we can learn we need to have this teachable attitude within us okay so with this as the time is running we'll just uh, end, dismiss this class with a word of prayer can i request brother subhashish to please lead us in prayer sure, pastor. thank you loving father once again lord we thank you so much for this um, beautiful day lord and lord i thank you so much for speaking to everyone lord through your uh, daughter lord the lord family is very important lord in uh, ministry lord i really pray as lord we all are learning together lord bless us that will be a good model will be a good husband good wife lord and will be a good uh, minister before many people lord let our family will be a blessing to our church and let our family be uh, will be a light and soul to this world master we thank you so much lord for speaking to us in jesus name i pray amen. amen amen thank you so much god bless you have a great day thank you god bless thank you, thank you god bless you.